Now we want to just get into the history of quality. Let's think about when did quality start? And the truth is it started about eight centuries ago. Um, take yourself back and think about the Middle Ages where products were custom made. And the quality of the product was based on the pride of the worker for that craft. Um, the quality movement can trace its roots back to medieval Europe where craftsmen began organizing into unions called guilds. This was in the 13th century. From then until the early 19th century, these craftsmen across middle, medieval Europe were organized into uh, these guilds. And they developed strict rules for products and service quality. They formed inspection committees that enforced rules by marking flawless goods with a special mark or symbol. These um, craftsmen often placed a second mark on the quality of the goods that they produce. Um, this mark would indicate when these products were faulty. So this was a time when uh, these products were custom made and we just had these marks. Let's advance to the next slide here. And this, this brings us to the Industrial Revolution. And this was in the 1800s. So think about the life back then. Um, there were three different phases. The first one was craftsmanship in the early 19th century. Manufacturing in the United States tended to follow the craftsmanship model that the European countries used. In this model, young boys learned a skill trade while serving as an apprentice and as a master. And, and this dated back to the, those early guild days. But then we moved on to the factory system where a product, um, the factory system was a product of the Industrial Revolution in Europe that did carry over into the US. It forced craftsmen to become factory workers and it forced shop owners to become production supervisors because the scale of production uh, went to a much higher level. So it marked an initial decline in the employee's sense of empowerment and the autonomy that they had in the workplace since now they were working in factories. And the quality in the factory system was ensured through the skill of laborers supplemented by audits and inspections. So the audits and inspections date back to 1800s. And then that brought us to the Taylor system. The Taylor system, but we're still on the previous slide, Jeff, thank you. The, and the Taylor system was in the late 19th century in the U.S., where the U.S. broke away from the European tradition. And this approach was developed by Frederick Taylor. His goal was to increase productivity without increasing the number of skilled craftsmen. So it was the be beginning of that Ford concept of um, manufacturing on a mass production. So he achieved this by assigning factory planning to specialized engineers and he used craftsmen and supervisors who displaced, who were displaced by the growth of the factories as inspectors and managers who executed these engineers' plans. Uh, the Taylor's approach led to big increases in productivity, but it had several drawbacks. The workers were once again stripped of their, their power and the new emphasis on productivity had a negative effect on quality. To remedy the quality decline, the factory managers created inspection departments to keep defective products from reaching customers. If the defective product did, did reach the consumer, it was more common for upper managers to ask the inspector, why did we let this out? Than to ask the production manager, why did we make it this way to begin with? And that brings us to the, to the next slide. Um, the beginning of the 20th century was marked with the inclusion of processes in quality practices. So we started thinking about processes, where a process is defined as a group of activities that takes an input, adds value to it, and provides an output. Um, so we had to think of processes because of the way these factories were mass producing. And this was when this, um, this, this character, Walter Schuhart, started becoming a leader in, in the history of quality. He recognized that industrial processes yield data that we can measure. 
For example, a process in which metal is cut into sheets yields certain measurements, such as the sheet's length, the height, and width. Schuhart determined this data could be analyzed using statistical techniques to see whether a process is stable and in control. Schuhart's concepts are often referred to as statistical quality control, which we will define later in this webinar. And they differ from product orientation in that they make quality relevant not only to the finished product, but also for the process that created it. Let's advance to the next slide. Um, this, this brought us to, from, from the time Walter Schuhart appeared in the 1920s, uh, since then, we had World War II, which had a big effect on quality. The big focus on quality was to produce quality products for militaries throughout the world. world. And the birth of total quality in the United States was in direct response to the quality revolution in Japan during the World War II, because Japan was producing high quality military goods. And soon thereafter, the American Society for Quality was formed. And we'll be mentioning ASQ throughout this webinar as we already did. Um, it's just been at the forefront of the quality movement for more than 65 years. The ASQ is headquartered in Milwaukee. And again, we definitely encourage you to participate in their conferences, their certification schemes, et cetera. Um, it's a global organization. Um, they have members from more than 140 countries and they're just a, a good global voice of quality. Um, since 1946, let's go to the next slide here. Um, this is when uh, Deming appeared, W.E. Deming, um, Edward Deming. Um, and that date really should say 1950 if you want to correct it. Um, but Deming delivered lectures on statistical measures and quality to Japanese engineers and CEOs. So this um, was when he became um, popular. Um, the, um, the, the Japanese welcomed Deming at a time that the US did not. Um, Deming's influence stemmed from Walter Schuhart. Um, basically what Deming did was he took a lot of what Schuhart was um, uh, developing, and he took it another step forward. And since the Jap Japanese began listening to him, um, this represented a new quality approach. Let's advance to the next slide here. So in the 1960s, the Japanese implemented um, quality, and this was a result of Deming being there. And he made different trips there in 1950. 1952, 1955, and 1956. Um, it would take another 10 to 20 years for their efforts to pay off, but it made big impacts. So we'll be talking about Deming after the first interactive exercise during the webinar here. Let's advance to the, the next slide here. By the end of the 1970s, the principles of quality had greatly influenced manufacturing and other industrial processes. It focused attention on how products and services could define and meet technical specifications. Businesses typically establish a quality control department to ensure specifications were met. So the beginning step was these QC departments, and the result of Deming's effort was to encourage these Japanese um, companies to also um, implement quality assurance programs and eventually a quality management system. And as the Japanese products thrived, there was a, an NBC uh, documentary on TV in 1980. It was titled, If Japan Can, Why Can We Not? So this broadcast went out to the United States and um, this was when Deming really became uh, the focus of American manufacturing. He gained national attention for his efforts. And this was when he really returned to his own country to uh, help them now that they were willing to listen. Let's go to the next slide. In the 1980s, um, as the Americans were listening to Deming's principles and the other quality uh, professionals at the time, they realized they could make a difference in any organization and touch every person in it. 
quality began to quality began to blossom into a much broader discipline aimed at aimed at leading, inspiring, and managing a broad range of businesses and activities, and the focus was always on excellence. Um, quality tools at this time began to uh, uh, emerge. Um, quality management systems um, such as Six Sigma, which started at Motorola and General Electric, as well as the total quality management approach. And we'll be talking about both of these later on in the webinar. Next slide, please. And now we look at what has happened since the turn of our century, uh, since 2000. Um, there has been a big push towards standardization and uh, quality management since the U.S. and uh, many different countries have adopted quality management systems. And now we're at a point where quality management systems are becoming refined and expanded. Um, for example, the Malcolm Baldridge Award was signed into law in 1987. That, that award is now popular. It recognizes U.S. organizations in the business, healthcare, education, and nonprofit sectors for their performance excellence. Um, Six Sigma is now widely used throughout the world. Um, and then we have these ISO standards, which we'll mention later on in the webinar, such as ISO 